Quincana is one of the most fearsome predators to have walked the earth with our human ancestors. This lesser known Pleistocene predator has gone under a lot of people's radar. In today's video, we'll take a look at how this predator lived, hunted, and eventually became extinct. Please enjoy. In 1970, a caver exploring Tea Tree Cave in North Queensland, Australia, discovered part of the skull of a reptile lying upside down on the cave floor about 60 metres from the entrance. Realising that the skull was something special, she reported her find, and paleontologists returned to the cave to take a look at the skull. The caver had stumbled across the remains of a long dead land-dwelling crocodile that was later described and given the name Quincana. Quincana is an extinct genus of Mecosuchian crocodilians that lived in Australia from about 28 million to 40,000 years ago. The genus contains four different species, Quincana forutistrum, Quincana tamara, Quincana babara, and Quincana mobaldi. The name Quincana comes from the Quincans, a legendary folk spirit from Guguilangi mythology. The distribution of Quincana was centred in the northeast of Australia, with remains known from sites as far apart as New South Wales and New Guinea. The species evidently did not inhabit the barren desert that was the main habitat inland of the continent, and seems instead to have had a range centred on the savannas of northern Australia and the now flooded Arafura Shelf. Most specimens of Quincana were small in size, about 10 foot, though one Pleistocene age specimen is estimated to have reached up to 20 foot in length, making it at the time one of Australia's largest predators, second only to Megalania. I will cover Megalania in a future video. One study argues that some species may have grown up to 30 foot, but this has been criticised for exaggeration, despite having some academic support and being widely cited. It has been speculated to weigh around 200 kg, although this estimate has also been criticised for being too large in comparison to the proportions of Quincana's skull specimens. The estimate is furthermore questioned because of the lack of complete Quincana specimens. Hunting away from water, Quincana was able to inflict serious injuries to prey with its bite alone, sufficiently injuring prey so even if they escaped they will succumb to the wound. The terrestrial crocodile had relatively long, agile legs, very different from the splayed limbs of modern crocodiles, and its teeth were curved and sharp, like those of a tyrannosaur. By the Pleistocene, Quincana had become one of the top terrestrial predators of Australia. The Australian megafauna were fair game for Quincana. Marsupials like Diprotodons, a giant wombat-like animal, fell prey to this crocodile. Quincana probably still spent a good deal of its time near sources of water, as these attracted large numbers of herbivorous marsupials and other animals on which this reptile could have preyed, including giant birds. Quincana probably used ambush attacks to surprise its prey. Using undergrowth as cover, the crocodile may have stalked to within striking distance of his victim, using its excellent sense of smell, and then, when it's within range, it bursts from cover with an explosive turn of speed, lunging at the prey with its mouth open, the jaw snapped shut on the victim, its sharp teeth allowed it to tear apart its prey, unlike its water-dwelling cousins, whose teeth are better suited for holding down and drowning their prey. Australian Aborigines undoubtedly came face to face with Quincana, and unfortunate individuals may have even fallen prey to it. To what extent humans hunted this reptile, if at all, is unknown, but such a large land-dwelling animal may have been hunted by humans at some point in the past. We do know that the most recent bones of this animal came from a time in Australia's history that is marked by the disappearance of many of its amazing animals. Around this time, climate change was taking its toll on the world, and although Australia was never buried beneath ice, habitats around the world were affected. Rains failed, and Australia dried out. Humans may have also played a role in their extinction, as they competed for large prey. In combination, climate change and human activity caused the herbivores to disappear. With prey becoming scarcer and scarcer, predators like Quincana were hit hard, and they too eventually became extinct. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed and wish to see more content like this, then please like, comment and subscribe. Also don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss a future video. Thank you.